Hello, my name is Paul Dwyer. I'm a Security GRC and Cybercrime Advisor. Today I'm going to talk about the overview of botnets. Okay, by way of an agenda, what I'll do is I'll describe the three main types of uh, botnets there are, which are IRC, HTTP, P2P. I'll also discuss how they're used in revenue generation and the development and recent trends in relation to development of botnets. Finally, we look at what they look like and have a look at actually creating a botnet virus. Okay, so the main type, the first type, if you like, is uh, an IRC botnet. And that starts off with a botnet herder, or some people refer to them as the botnet pimp. And stage one will be when they infect what we refer to as patient zero or the first infected PC. That PC will then start to infect a number of other computers and create the actual botnet itself. Uh, these machines are then controlled by what's referred to as the command and control server. This is a server which is contacted uh, from the botnet herder via a number of proxy servers in order to disguise uh, his or her identity. Uh, the command and control center then receives the commands from the botnet herder and distributes those out to the infected PCs. Those commands may be, for example, to attack a website via a DDoS attack, or they may be, in fact, to actually uh, send out a spam attack. Okay, now let's look at HTTP botnets. Okay, they're very similar to IRC as they start off with the botnet herder. That botnet herder will uh, start off with an initial PC that they infect, patient zero. Uh, that PC again may start to infect other PCs and start building up a large botnet of uh, infected computers. Again, there will be a command and control server. This command and control server will receive commands from the botnet herder uh, via proxies, uh, multiple proxies, again, in order to disguise uh, their identity. Now, the main difference here is that the connection is via HTTP rather than IRC, and that is not a continuous link or a continuous connection. The virus that has infected the, the PCs will actually know when to communicate or, or download its commands from the command and control center uh, or its instructions, which will be cascaded then across uh, the botnet and they may be instructions for example again to do a DDoS website attack or there may be instructions to uh, start a spam campaign. Okay the third type of botnet is a botnet referred to as P2P or peer-to-peer -peer botnet. Uh, th these ones are actually yeah, quite different from the previous two in, in that it, uh, uh, the only uh, similarity is that the botnet herder is at the start and then will uh, infect a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, mesh of computers. So you have a mesh network uh, which is quite complex. Um, again, uh, he will uh, contact the, those computers or communicate with those computers via a number of proxies in order to disguise um, his location, uh, his identity, and so on. Um, he may assign a number of those computers uh, uh, to, to have specific functions uh, within this peer-to-peer -peer network. For example, one may act as a DNS node. You may have one that acts as a spam instruction node for sending out spam instructions to other infected computers. You may indeed have a download node. A download node may be, for example, that will hold a number of updates to the malware, and those uh, updates will then be cascaded out to the other infected computers. Again, he can issue the commands out through the peer-to-peer -peer network to spam, and also, for example, to uh, perform a DDoS attack against uh, websites. So, where does the revenue for the underground economy come from here? Well, the main areas, if you like, are from spam. It's still a huge business. Uh, spyware and crimeware, uh, still a huge area of business. And uh, phishing proxies and DDoS. These are the main areas so DDoS for hire and so on uh, that can be used as part of a, a crime and that's where the botnets are an essential and integral part of these actual uh, campaigns. Okay, so now let's very quickly look at the development of botnets. What is the difference between the old style and the newer style and where, where they're developing, what are the trends and so on? Well, first of all, the old styles uh, tend to have a central point of failure. They were IRC based, so they had continuous uh, connections through, so easier to identify and so on. Um, they had command line access, which is more difficult than today's ones. They had limited concealment uh, functionality. They had limited lifespan and they were able to handle modular exploits, so they could do updates to them and send them out uh, to perform different types of attack and so on. But let's look at the newer types of botnets. Well, they tend to be on a distributed architecture. They'll be based on HTTP or P2P based, so uh, much more complex and uh, uh, much harder to uh, actually deal with and, and put out of operation. They have enhanced graphic user interfaces, so much easier for, for amateur criminals or, or uh, uh, amateurs or non-techie savvy people that are getting involved in cybercrime to get involved with. Uh, they'll use extensive encryption, make it more difficult uh, to deal with. 
have. Uh, they tend to be immortal or have unlimited size because of their capabilities and because of the design and architecture. They use advanced forms of social engineering. They also have a number of self-protection uh, mechanisms built in. And we've often seen now that when you even scan for these types of things, that they will attack the scanning IP address. Uh, they also have self-healing uh, functionality where if, if parts of them are damaged or removed, they will actually reinstall themselves in multiple locations within machines and so on. And they have custom packing uh, functions. And what packing is is where they're encoded and compressed uh, and it makes harder for any security researchers to actually find them. They won't use the off-the-shelf tools to, to actually uh, uh, handle that. They'll, they'll perform uh, their own types of their own methodologies of custom packing. They've also become VM aware. And what that means is that they're actually aware whether they're on virtual machines. And the reason they've built in that functionality is in order to find out whether um, they're being tested because a lot of security researchers will use virtual machines when they're looking for this sort of stuff. So what they do now is that they may act and behave in a different way within a virtual machine and therefore not be packed, uh, picked up through uh, standard security research. They also use local DNS poisoning and double fast fluxing, which I won't go into now, but uh, may put together a, a further presentation to develop those techniques in, in uh, further detail. Okay, so now let's very quickly look at what's involved in uh, creating a botnet virus. So this is actually the virus that infects the machine to make the machine become part of the botnet. Um, any simple search on Google or YouTube will find thousands and thousands of entries telling you how to actually perform, for example, a DDoS attack um, and create a botnet and so on. And this is one very simple one, uh, which I'll show you how we actually create the virus itself, um, which would be distributed to infect a machine. So firstly, I click on the uh, uh, the exit that controls it, and that comes up first of all, and straight away, my antivirus software has detected this is a virus. Okay, but it's my virus, so I don't care, so I just ignore that and allow it to continue. And it's going to allow me now to put in the specific details required in order to customize this virus that it will talk back to my con command and control center and allow all of those machines infected by this virus to be ultimately under my control. So I ignore that warning from my antivirus software and I continue. It asks me for the address of my control panel and I've put up a, a demo up on uh, the website policyedwire.com. And again, what I'll do in a, in a further uh, demonstration video, I'll show how this is actually used in a DDoS attack. So for all the, all the uh, uh, things being prompted here, for example, the update frequency, I'll put in 15 minutes. Uh, mutex string, I can just put in anything random here at all. Uh, the install path, I'll just go for the default. Again, secondary path, I'll just enter the default and return. Now, this exe file is now the virus. This is a customized one that when it affects a machine, will have that machine to be under the control of my command and control center, which is up on policydwire.com. So, so if you'd like to have any further information, please don't hesitate to contact me on the, on the various uh, social media outlets there from uh, my blog, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube, and so on, or visit my website on policydwire.com. I hope you found this video uh, informative and useful. Thank you.